Have you ever heard of Darth Nemesis the Wise? He had powers to destroy whole stars. You may wonder, where can you learn this power? Well, it's not from the tutorial, I'll tell you that. We're going to be talking about the mana system today. Yes, becoming the nemesis, becoming the crisis is something that a lot of people have been role-playing for quite some time, but thankfully due to the nemesis expansion, this is now something that is baked into the game. You can play on par with the Fallen Empires, the endgame crises, and have a full finale to the game with an actual victory condition. So who do you, how do you actually activate all of this stuff? Well, first of all, we're going to need to go to the uh, unit tradition screen here under unity and go to a empty ascension slot. Now you can become the crisis relatively early in the game. Heck, you can already do it on your third ascension perk if you wish to do so. There are a bunch of things that the nemesis system, uh, the mana system allows you to do that are quite powerful even early on in the game. One of which is building ships with minerals and that is a blast from the past. Anyway, what we can do here, we can become the crisis and all we need to be is not be xenophile or pacifist or rogue servitor and of course have the third slot available as soon as we enable this and unpause we will get ourselves our first event and our first causes and belli so there's a bunch of the rather interesting things that we can do here we can impose inclusion on a uh, other empire which is effectively making them our vassal and uh, the other one is existential expulsion which is a new cb which allows us to completely murderize any other empire in addition we get a nice little little event here that uh, gives us a additional crisis level potential plus a secret project or special project called something beyond Situation. reality if we go into the uh, situation log, the uh, Becoming the Crisis is here and something in Beyond Reality is there. And the special projects that allows us to move further along the path of becoming the crisis and we can enable that and let that go in the meantime though you may think by yourself okay I expect there's nothing else on the UI here illustrating that we can do anything here um what what, what happens next well the one thing about the nemesis system is that it is not particularly clear on where it is if we navigate to the unity section we will see there is a little crisis button over here next to relics if we see that we will end up on this menu in a perfect world we would have a little icon on the screen but that is sadly not the world that we live in. Anyway, uh, we have five levels of crisis that we can get. At its basis, where we just get a bunch of objectives and purging happens a lot faster, as well as uh, other empires will be easier to turn into vassals, all the way up to existential threats where we can destroy whole star systems. Yes, we can destroy whole star systems with this, which is quite exciting. We have a bunch of objectives, as well as a summary of what all of this stuff does. But what you need to know is that we need to have a certain amount of menace to move on towards the next stage of the project. If we have 1,000 menace, we will advance to uh, this stage. Then we will have 2,000, 3,000, uh, 5,000, and then finally 10,000 in menace in order to unlock everything and move to the final stage. Now we have this entire list of things that you can read. Uh, we can get menace by destroying empires, destroying enemy ships, destroying star bases, purging or assimilating pops, destroying whole worlds, conquer worlds, vassalize whole empires, uh, having vassals over time. Uh, you will get a tick for that every x amount of time uh disruptive operations which is pretty cool that comes with the intel system and finally if you're in breach of galactic community law because yes you can still be part of the galactic community whilst doing this which is pretty cool still though the features themselves is what we are after because we want to generate enough menace in order to unlock the aerophasic engine as well as the star eater uh, level 5 is rather scary as well because the entire galaxy will declare war on us but that is a story for another time let's take a look at the full list of menace options later in the game because overall it is a journey in order to get there and it's going to take you a little bit of time but it's going to be a fun one regardless because you're going to do quite a lot of nefarious things in order to get there so we're a little bit further into the timeline right now, and if we go over towards our Crisis tab, we will see that it is almost 
full. At least it is full, it is just locked right now because we haven't done the final project to tear the fabric of reality. Still though, we've done all of these projects to get every single tier. You will need to do every single one of these in order to do so. I'm not actually going to read them out because they are very spoilery, but still though, it does unlock certain levels of threat. For instance, on the second, first, the second level, we get the menacing Corvette. On the third one, we get the destroyer and then we get the cruiser. Yes, these are special ships that you can unlock as the crisis and they are only costing going to cost you at least minerals and that is a huge huge deal because you won't have to deal with alloys all that much still it is a nice little bonus for instance the other levels will also add you additional damage against star bases reduce war exhaustion increase ship build speed allowing you to do armageddon bombardment if you haven't already have that uh increasing your evasion and disengagement chance on uh, your corvettes uh, increasing your ship's weapons damage by 50% and finally the menacing destroyer tracking increasing by 30% now you may think by yourself uh, what are all of these um, menacing ships you're talking about well it is actually kind of straightforward if we go into our designer here the menacing corvette looks like this it is basically our corvette except it costs minerals to build it has a nice little layout here it doesn't have any torpedoes which is a little bit unfortunate but it's still a nice thing to have the destroyer is very similar once again it has a tor torpedo bay as well as point defense on it as well as a bunch of other modifications that you can run and finally the cruiser which does look like two asteroids slapped together they are basically the pirate ships within the game and they have only one layout but once again they are made out of minerals rather than alloys which makes them exceptionally cheap and quick to build plus the mana system as i mentioned before will give inherent bonuses to that now, one thing that is really important at this stage, if you've unlocked everything up to level 4 within the Nemesis system, and you are ready to turn into an existential threat crisis level 5, you have the option to do the tear of fab uh, the tearing the fabric of reality event you need to be really really s uh, careful about this though because if you go down this route, if you go down this tier, which you can totally do, the entire galaxy will immediately declare you a crisis and throw you out of the galactic community as well as declare war on you. So it's a good idea to have enough basils uh, underneath you as well as uh, crippled other empires within the galaxy or at least be... Uh, outclassing them to a certain degree that you can completely stop their onslaught which should be relatively doable to be honest at uh, 22 months you know it, it gives you some time to prepare and move your ships into a reasonable position but make sure you have enough fleets in order to take on the rest of the galaxy because you will be fighting everybody including the fallen empires they will awaken so as soon as the special project is complete, the last one tearing of, uh, a tearing of the fabric, you will be given this particular event, which is called The End Is Nigh. It boils down to the fact that you can now build a new type of technology called a Star Eater. And on top of that, your capital world will now have a brand new megastructure sitting at its center, or at least as soon as we execute this. There's no way of coming back from this as soon as we hit the button things are going to get crazy. As we will instantly be declared the galactic crisis within the game and we're going to be in a heap of problems. Uh, they will start uh, attacking us pretty much instantly and of course our battle will be legendary and the aerophasic engine frame will be built immediately. Now we will get a bonus from megastructure build speed if we had decided to go for the megastructure build speed which we have under master builders. However, you will need to be able to build this. Now the first stage will cost you 20,000 um, dark matter. Now, the real question is, where are we going to get all this dark matter from? Well, that is a good question. Um, in order to do that, uh, we could all either mine our dark matter, like plebs, and get plus four months slowly but steadily over time. We could potentially even go onto the black uh, on the uh, on the market and uh, you know just try to buy it, but we clearly don't have enough money for that, which is a problem. Still, though, what we instead can do is we can enable the power of our brand new cube-like ships yes they are in fact cube-like they are of course the star eaters now the star eaters are a rather curious set as the event immediately pops up and every single ship allows us to blow up stars and use the matter inside of them 
to generate our dark matter. There they are, the ISS Gnaw and, of course, the ISS Gorge. Now, uh, don't be worried about their appearance. They, they are quite uh, formidable. Even if we go into our ship designer, we'll actually have them right here. They're the Apocalyptic Prime and the Devourer class. Now, you can kit these out, unlike, for instance, the uh, Colossus, and uh, put weapons on them. And you only have, like, one, one style here, but you can put so many cool things on here, and they're basically a fleet on their own. 42,000 uh, 42, fleet power per tick is not, um, not to be ignored, but still, it is pretty darn good. So what do you do with one of these, A-Spec? Well, that is a good question, dear viewer. What can we do with these? Let's jump them over towards a system, uh, this one, for instance. Actually, let's jump both of them over, shall we? We, and let's get down to business. Uh, yeah, uh, instantly uh, the uh, Fallen Empire is just like, yo, uh, we're not cool with this. Yeah, well, I'm not cool with you either. So, uh, boohoo. Um, so, we can uh, go ahead and start cracking uh, these here stars. We're going to actually start off with this one over here. The main problem we have right now is that the star base is kind of blocking the way, but that's perfectly fine. We're going to go ahead and uh, just uh, crack open this egg because you cannot make a, uh, a dead galaxy without cracking a couple of eggs. Anyway, our cubes are just sitting around here uh, being all cool and stuff. That's perfectly fine. And uh, the system has been under control. And we're just going to move over here and start cracking uh, this star. Whilst we're also going to crack uh, this star. Now, as you can see, immediately our cube will get into position and start moving into cracking mode. Because, yes, that is exactly what that is. Um, we will start moving into uh, position. And, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to to start uh, looking at blowing up this here star ain't that just quite something isn't it well to be honest we're going to need to do this uh, quite a lot because um well we need we we're gonna get only 2000 uh, dark matter per star we're going to need a couple of hundred thousand in order to finish the project which is perfectly fine you know these it's just part of the system there's there's nothing that we can really do about there but still you know um overall the whole system is perfectly fine let's jump into the future where we've probably consumed about half the galaxy's worth of stars and yes you can consume your own stars if you want to if you want to keep your star eaters within your territory um uh, and yeah let's take it from there so we've managed to get ourselves uh, 20,000 uh, Dark Matter here. Let's start uh, uh, upgrading the Aerophasic Engine. Um, this is going to take a while. Why is this going to take a while? Well, first of all, it takes 1,700 days to blow things up here, which is obviously problematic when you are at total war. Uh, there are several stages to this, which is going to be challenging when everybody's knocking on your door so you will most likely going to need to go on the offensive which is exactly what we're going to be doing here we're going to pave the way for our star eaters in order to bring um prosperity and peace to the galaxy hello there jeff imperium i hope that you're not too worried about what we are about to do as you can see we're just continuously blowing up stars left right and center just make sure that you um set everything up beforehand you can of course daisy chain your star eating star eating experience and uh, just take from there yeah just uh, just set up a line and every single one of these will generate you the dark matter that you need isn't that just exciting well i think it is now one thing that you need to keep in mind is is that once the aerophasic engine is at a certain stage there will be tears in the fabric of reality. And what does that entail? Well, you will get warp entities, or shroud entities, let's be honest here. Let's stay on brand. Uh, spawning all over the place and rampaging through the whole uh, galaxy. This should give you a little bit of help uh, with the on uh, attacking force that is trying to rampage through your empire. But uh, they will also spawn in your territory, so you need to keep an eye on that and they will keep spawning. In the end, the Aerophasic Engine has several stages going from 20,000 to 30,000 to 40,000 to 50,000 Dark Matter. And considering how many stars you need to explode in order to get that done, well, you're going to be dragging quite a lot of stellar corpses behind you. Whether or not that is your dealio is a whole is a whole different question. Still though, once the uh, partial Aerophasic Engine is ready to go to its final stage, you will get the following event. The beginning and an end. We have seen this story before. Everything is in place and the aerophasic engine is now fully operational. And the real question is, 
are you going to fire at will, Commander? The next phase of existence awaits, and shall we activate the engine? The galaxy is destroyed, and we win the game. As instantly the galaxy is expunged, as all the states within die in a glorious destructive event, and the entire galaxy is now covered in black holes, with only us standing at the edge of the abyss, staring down over a victory. Because every single planet is now a black hole! Every single one of them! Ain't that just quite something? Everybody is dead, including all of our fleets, all of our planets, and that is it. But you've won! Is that not what matters in the end? Well, that's the question I have for you. Thank you so much for watching this video on the Menace system. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. Uh, it's a generalized overview. The whole process is far longer than you think having to get all the menace points by killing off as much as you can then building up the aerophasic engine whilst everybody is attacking you can be a challenge don't underestimate it it's a lot of fun and you should definitely go ahead and try it of course if you have nemesis i want to thank my patrons for making this video possible and if you dear viewer have watched all the way till the end I'd like you to put something down in the comments for me, because then I will know that you have seen this whole video. Write in the comments for me, I am the final crisis. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take good care of yourselves, and remember...